You and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves in this filling in I want to dry up but you Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I want to bury the hatchet And find the way back to our home Our home, our home We don't have to drift inside this dome we left Darwin and headed for Kakadu. First stop is a jumping croc tour in the Adelaide River. Here you go, we got everyone. Whoa. That's a big boy, isn't it, eh? <laughs> you might get a bit of mud on you up here. Yeah, this is uh, a big man. He's uh, 6.1 meters. He's one of the biggest known crocs on the planet, or authenticated. And uh, full of aggression. Look out. See this over here? Another crocodile just chased that other croc in the water. That's wow. a different crocodile. Have a look at the back legs, everyone. See those big back legs. They're very heavily boob back feet. Yeah, moving that stuff, we just sink. See those big back feet pushing them along in the tail? Yeah. yeah. Very powerful. Look at those muscles. They're like, you know, how swimmers have soft muscles. Crocodiles have a very supple muscle as well. Sorry, I'm so sorry. He's a bit pregnant, you reckon? Might have a little buffalo in there. This is like good cardio. Hey, someone's in color. So this clock's about 70 years old, folks. Yeah, and there's a lot of, lot of love left in him. Um, they can grow, we know, up to at least 150 years. I'm going to leave him over here first. You see this mud, the way they can move through the mud. Look at the big tail, the, uh, it's a massive powerhouse, that tail. Half the length of the body. <laughs> you notice uh, yellow teeth and white teeth? Yeah. Anything can happen. You just never know. So at any time there can be a fight. You never know. I've seen I've been feeding the croc like this. This guy actually. Just like that before and I've had him just lifted out of the water by a big male. Right there underneath it, just straight up. There you, go. you never know what's gonna happen here. There's actually some sharks in the water here too. See his back leg just dragging. Poor thing, yeah. He's had a hard time. This guy, uh, if I get him to uh, another crocodile here, which I'm trying to. Is there any other croc around you see? Yeah, one yeah. Oh, yeah. One of these little things that are jumping. Mud skippers, yeah. Yeah. They're amphibians. So they appear when the tide's out. Go into the holes when the tide comes in. The scar is an old male. He's, there's a bit of a runt. And the poor thing, he had, uh, you know, balls of steel, really. This guy used to hang around, never worry about the big crocs. He'd take a beating off him one day, just a couple of weeks ago. Dominator grabbed him by the back leg. Obviously snapped it at the hip by the looks of things. And uh, you can see that he's all right about it. Um, these things are incredibly resilient. Uh, we'll let him have it. See that armory on the back, very solid, isn't it? Hey? You see this area around the neck here, heavily protected. 
That's where crocodiles come down on each other and head back. They bring their heads up out of the water, they come down and smash them right at the back of the neck. I think they must try and break the spine. Very, uh, it looks like a real weak joint there, but it must be very strong. These are called the cranial lobes. <laughs> the brain's right about underneath the point of that now. Just under there. The eyes, you can see, go right back in the sockets. Crocodiles have incredibly uh, good vision, as I said. There are three sets of eyelids. I think I explained that earlier. They've got an upper and lower, and they have this uh, transparent eyelid, which comes from the middle to the back, uh, from the back front to the back, and the nasal valve up the front here. Woohoo! We're in Kakadu. Yep. A for Adele. We're here at Carl's Crossing. Now, Carl's Crossing at the moment is actually closed, so you can't drive through. It's closed uh, due to COVID and uh, the recent outbreak that we had in Darwin. So, uh, no cars able to come through here at the moment. Let's go and have a look, see if we can see any crocodiles. It's low tide. Uh, doesn't seem to be a lot happening there's not a lot of water, but we'll go and check it out, see what we can see anyway. There's a croc just straight, straight there, at the end of my finger. It's just climbed up, sunning himself on the bank. Some of the first pieces of the rock art. Archaeologists estimate this, these to be 5,000 years old. Mm, cool. Amazing. They look a different colour though, don't they? I do. How are you enjoying the view? Loving it. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. There's magic up here. Yeah,
We're off on another trek today. This is an adventure we've always wanted to do, so always been keen to do this one. And we're heading off to see some falls today, aren't we, Doc? Yeah. We're going to Gunlam Falls. Gunlam Falls? Uh, no, unfortunately, we're not going to Gunlam Falls. We've just got a caravan going past. Hey guys, how are you? No, unfortunately, Gunnam Falls is closed. So uh, there's a dispute going on there. Not going to Gunnam Falls, but we are going to another falls. So that's going to be really, really exciting. Oh, so we're going to Twin Falls. Twin Falls? Um, no, no, no. Twin Falls is closed. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go to Twin Falls. But uh, what we are doing is we are heading into Jim Jim Falls. Hey, at least we get one out of three. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into Jim Jim Falls today. Unfortunately, Gunalum and Twin Falls are closed. We aren't going to get to there, but this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to head in and, uh, and take a look around, go for a walk. Uh, apparently it's an 800 meter walk. Yep. But uh, we're taking the Triton in. Uh, what I did read this morning was there is um, a deep water or some water we've got a water crossing we've got to go through and they do recommend a snorkel which we don't have so that one we've got to find out about but it is it's early july so it's plenty of dry season i'm expecting it to be quite low i don't expect too many problems We've only got a few hundred metres down the road and these corrugations are really bad. And it's about 32, 34. We'll run about that. I still don't see what the issue was with bringing the motor home. like a bit of dental work. It's been just over an hour now since we let down the tyres. We've gone past the turn off to Twin Falls. Hopefully not too much further to go. It took us around uh, 40 minutes to get into the campground. And then we hit this track. So we've been about 20, 25 minutes now driving the track. You've put your insect repellent on? Yep. So this one we've got? This is just um, Radius, it's from Woolworths. It's about $4 a can half the price of some of the other ones, so it seems to work okay. It's but you can't use sprays. Well, this one seems to be okay. What normally happens when you use a spray? Yeah, if I use um, the aerosols, I come out in a rash, but uh, I so I usually use creams or a, a pump, but this one seems to be okay. There we go, 800 metres to the viewing pool, and beach pool walk, beach pool walk is two kilometres. Bit of a rocky start. Yes. <laughs> Have a look at that. That's crazy. Hey, 
Who would have thought you're going to see this? It's an actual beach. It's crazy. There's a bit of water falling. Doesn't this look insane? So, what's it like? This water's freezing. Is it? Yeah. Oh, damn it. This is probably as far as I'll go. <laughs> I'll get in. So Too cold? Gonna, you're going to find it really cold. It's icy. <laughs> you are melting. <laughs> Del's face has gone all puffy and red. She's so hot. But Del just naturally. Mm. You, I don't have to move much at all, I'm hot. Yeah. It is one of the most stunning beaches in the country. It truly is. I've seen some amazing inland beaches. And this one is right up there. This has provided so many wow moments, hasn't it? Yeah. It's just extraordinary. The cliffs are just so high. Come out here. Look above the falls, look at those rocks that are perched up there. Oh, I haven't seen them. How long, did it, how long did it take to get here? We left at 2 and it's 2.45, so it took us 45 minutes to get back it is indeed. from the falls. How good is it to see the car park? <laughs> right. Look at the smoke. Yeah. Well, those corrugations yesterday out to Jim Jim Falls were pretty insane. Now, it's certainly the worst ones we've seen, and the Triton didn't come out of it unscathed unfortunately so uh, the spotlight the bracket just snapped off so uh, need to find a solution to that bracket uh, just I'll contact the guys we bought it from and um, see if they can send me one Today was a, a relaxing day here at Catherine Lodge. Kakadu Lodge. Kakadu Lodge. I knew that. I was just testing you. Just watching a plane going over. It was a semi quiet plane. So we had two swimmers in the pool today. Yeah, I need another one. I'm hot. <laughs> and that pool cools you off really quickly. It's it's very, very cool, but uh, very cool. <laughs> yeah, did some washing today. We did, yeah. We, um, I think um, uh, things caught up with me a little bit. Uh, stomach muscles have been a little bit sore today, I think, from all the lifting. Um, been putting in the jerry cans of fuel into the four-wheel drive and 
just water and all sorts of different things. So climbing over the rocks. Climbing over the rocks, maybe. Um, yeah, but just a little bit fatigued. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm about three months now post op from a gallbladder up. Uh, every now and again now, most of the time I'm fine, but uh, every week or so it seems to catch up. So uh, hopefully I'll be fully recovered over the next few weeks. Um, tomorrow we've got some more things to see here in Kakadu uh, on our way out. So we'll uh, leave Kakadu tomorrow. We'll end up. Uh, we're going to end up in Catherine over the weekend. We have been fielding a few questions from guys asking about camping here. Uh, in the area and camping around the Carls Crossing and Ubia region, there is a campground there and it's $15 per person per night. So if there's two of you, it's going to be 30 bucks a night. If there's a family, it might hold value, I'm not too sure. But uh, for us as a couple, uh, that was going to be 30 bucks a night. Not too far from there is this place, Kakadu Lodge. Unpowered, which is the equivalent $32 a night, yet here you've got the security of the gates, you've got a pool to use during the day and uh, and there's a, there was a lot of mosquitoes around near Ubia and Carl's Crossing and they're at that campground as well. They are here as well but nowhere near as bad. Uh, Coinda Lodge, we're not going to stay there quite simply because it's, it's just obscene what they're charging. Uh, they simply seem to be, uh, it depends on how full they are and it changes from day to day, week to week. And if you look on Wikicamps you'll see that at the moment I believe they're charging $89 to $92 a night. Absolutely insane. So they can get stuffed. Um, so we've just based ourselves here out of Jabiru and that's worked really, really well. Alright, hopefully that helps you out with ideas on camping here. Uh, the other one we stopped at was Bark Hut Inn on the way in. That was $18 unpowered or $30 powered. Uh, we decided to stay that one. We thought that was good value as well. Where are you going? We're back at Edith Falls. Next week it's more waterfalls as we visit two more amazing locations. We make it to Catherine and Matarenka as we head back for the Queensland border, unsure if we can cross due to COVID.